Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing out there today? Sorry, I'm running two or three minutes late. Boy, I tell you, I, got, I was just meditating in the Word and looking at some things in the Word and got caught up in the Word and lost track of time. That's what happened when you get into the Word of God. And uh, listen, it is good to be with you on tonight. Man, I tell you, I've been thinking about what we talked about on last night. And uh, those butts, get that butt out the way. It's time to stop being a butt. <laughs> I don't know if you can handle that, but uh, let me tell you something. It takes the mature to handle that kind of talking. And uh, but it's all good, y'all. Listen, y'all, y'all know where I'm coming from. You know what I'm doing here. You know, I ain't trying to be ugly. I kind of stuff. I'm just trying to keep it real practical, you know, and uh, make sure we understand what it looks like when we act certain ways the, and the power of a negative attitude. Oh my goodness. Listen, we're going to dive a little bit deeper in this tonight. I don't know if we're going to get to the next insect tonight as well, because so much to talk about, about this negativity. This thing is so powerful. And uh, so bear with me. And uh, we're going to look at, so I hope you had a chance to read Numbers 13 and 14 and get a good picture of what was going on with the people of God, why they could not and did not enter their land of promise that God had promised to them. Oh my God, man! I tell you, I'm so excited. I want to get it right to it. But you, I mean, just say this before I get to it. You've got to understand something. That listen, your attitude either shut God down in your life or releases God in your life to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask, think, or imagine. Oh my goodness. Listen, this thing about attitude is so, so very powerful. So listen, I hope you told somebody about it to join us tonight. And uh, we're going to get into it again. And we're going to look at it. God, listen, it's time to get that attitude right. And uh, get rid of that negativity uh, out of your life, out of your way of thinking. And then you can get rid of that negative spirit that seems to follow you and cover you everywhere you go. And just dog in your life. Are you ready to break that tonight? If you're ready to break that, lift your hands and say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to break. But before we do that, let's speak into our lives prophetically and over our lives prophetically. Our success for you confession is based upon the truth, the word of God. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. And as y'all can see, I'm fired up, I'm crunk. I'm always crunk. I'm just a little crunk, you know, more crunk in some days than others. But tonight I am I am because I see this thing so clearly. And uh, so anyway, let's do our confession together. I am highly treasured and favored of God. I have a healthy respect for myself. I am a spirit being possessing a mind and living in a healthy human body. I am blessed with the seed of greatness and God's character and ability lives within me. Oh, I believe it, causing me to excel in every area of my life through the power of love and forgiveness. Yes, I am freed from all emotional hurt, fantasies, fear, and strife, which will no longer rob me of my happiness and forward progress in life. Therefore, I take full responsibility for who I am and what I shall become. Upon the principles and wisdom of life will I delight and meditate day and night. My thought life is being renewed and my true purpose for living has been and is being revealed. On this day and forevermore, I declare that, come on, let's be bold. I am whole, I am fulfilled, I am happy. Oh yes, I am successful to me. Yes, that's what it's all about. You got to declare that, you got to grab a hold of that, you got to believe that. I don't care what's going on. You can be in the middle of all hell right now, but your attitude can bring you out. Oh my God, oh my God, let me tell you, I'm tell you something, when you in faith, your attitude is going to reflect that. My mind just went to Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. I, I know I don't say that, but that's just the way I said it. And uh, 
in the fiery furnace and Daniel in the den of lions. Something about their attitude that cooled off the fire, that took the burning out the fire. Something about Daniel's attitude that took the hunger out of the lion's mind. Why? Because they had a mind of faith. Oh my God. So let's, let's look at uh, tonight. We're going to continue. And those of y'all that join us for the first time, I'm going to give you a chance to write down these seven key emotions before I get off into them. And uh, go ahead and write them down if you didn't catch them last time. And then I'm gonna, they're going to go away here in a minute, and we're going to get into number two. Amen. The first insect we said, the insect of immaturity. We dealt with that. Go back and look at the replay. The second insect is the insect of negativity. The third insect is the insect of self-centeredness. The fourth insect is the insect of envy. The fifth insect that we've got to deal with in our lives daily is the insect of covetousness. The sixth insect that everybody got to deal with every day is that temperament, that temper of yours. Oh my God, that's the core. Listen, that's, that's the core of the center of that attitude. And then the number seven final insect that you got to deal with, we got to deal with every day is the insect of strife. But tonight, 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 all tonight, we are going to talk about number two again. And I got a feeling we ain't going to get no further than that. That's okay. Because listen, it's important that we grow and not go on. Amen. You want to grow before you go. So before we go to the next one, we're going to make sure that we grow in our understanding about the power of a negative attitude and how it just messes up everything in your life. All right, turn with me to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. We're looking at an example of God's people with a negative attitude, a whole nation, over a million plus people with a negative attitude, and it stopped them right in their track. Listen to me very careful. Your attitude and my attitude is deciding whether I keep moving forward or you find yourself standing still, going nowhere. Your attitude. Oh, my goodness. You better go call somebody right now and say, oh, girl, oh, brother, you got to hear this tonight. Listen to this tonight. If you don't listen to no other night, Listen tonight about this. At it's time to check ourselves and stop continuing to wreck ourselves because we are wrecking our lives. We are, listen, we are causing havoc in our own lives because of a lack of understanding about the power of our attitude. So the backdrop is this Numbers chapter 13. God has been promising for generations the land that flows with milk and honey to his people. God had been promising prophetically declared before the foundation of the world this plan, this land of prosperity, peace. Woo! But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what God has promised you. Mm, mm, mm. If you and I don't have the right attitude, the promises of God will remain just that, promises. You'll never see the practical manifestation in your life because of your attitude. Wow. God had a hard time getting his people in the right attitude because the right attitude means everything to God and it needs to mean everything to you and I because how is it God being almighty, all powerful, omniscience, omnipresence, the great sovereign one, 
the creator of all things that was created. How is it that with that power could not and will not bring his people into the manifestation of his promises because the almighty one gave you and I a power that can stop God in his track in our lives or get God moving in our lives. Did you know that? That our attitude, get God moving or our attitude, stop him in his track. Where is God in your life? Is it seem like God is standing still in your life? Check your attitude. You want to see God take off in your life? You want to see the power, the spirit of God moving in your life? Check your attitude. Hear me, preachers, pastors, bishops, doctors, lawyers, teachers, everybody, babies, sons and daughters. Please hear me. Attitude. This is a reminder course. We all know this. But we have a tendency to forget it. So I'm not telling you anything you don't even know. I'm just bringing you to a greater consciousness and a greater awareness why you've been thinking it's the people around you. You've been thinking it's your education or the lack of. You've been thinking because you don't have the money. You've been thinking because the family you were born into. You've been thinking because of the imperfection that's in your flesh. You've been thinking those things got you stuck. But I present to you tonight by the spirit of God. He says, it's your attitude. I want to challenge you tonight to take on a different attitude, to shift from a negative attitude to a positive. A negative attitude, please hear me, is founded in fear. A doubtful mindset is founded in fear. A positive attitude, an attitude of belief and hope is only found in faith. And faith is founded in truth. So if you get the truth, accept the truth, you'll walk in faith and you'll walk in a positive faith feel attitude that'll see super upon your natural. Remember, God don't do the normal. He only does the natural. So watch this. So as I was saying, the backdrop is that God's people, starting at verse number 25, we're not going to read it all, but I'm just telling you what to start and look at. Then it begins to say that the after Moses sent out the spy, they come back with their report. Let's read some of the things they said. Starting at verse number um, 25. Um, I guess we will start at verse number well, I, I want to look at I want to look at uh, verse number. Let's see here. I apologize for that, y'all. I, I wasn't sure where I want to start it. <laughs> it says this. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to uh, point out a few things. I'm not going to necessarily read the scripture. It says, starting at verse number seventeen through twenty, it uh, several things in there. It says is is that they assess the people, they observe the land, they describe the towns. They described whether or not the soil was fertile or barren. And they sampled the produce. Now watch this. That when they went into the land, I don't know if somebody got my idea. When they went into the land, the land was as prosperous as God had promised and described. The land was so prosperous that the Bible said they saw so big, clusters of grapes so big that it took two men to carry them on a pole 
two men on a pole carrying a cluster of grapes. Now, if that ain't a prosperous land, I don't know what it is. The land was so fertile. And then they saw giants. The people were so big and everything was so large. It said the land was so prosperous, it was overwhelming. But that's where God wanted to take, excuse me, his people. But why couldn't he take them there? Because, look at verse number uh, 28, 27. Verse number 27, number 13 says, and they told him and said, we came, sorry, I don't know what's got in my eye here. Give me a moment. All right. It says, and they told him and said, we came into the land whither you sent us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. They showed him the fruit, the grapes, that took two men to carry, two grown men to carry one cluster of grape. Now, that's, oh, that's rich and prosperous. But look what verse number 28 says. But, or nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. See, negative people always got a but. Yeah, I see that, but. I see that prosperity, but. Listen to me very careful. When you have a negative attitude, you can stare prosperity and success right in the face. But because you got a negative attitude, you still will find something to doubt. Now, negative-minded people always find a reason to doubt, even when they're looking at the very thing they wish would happen. Because negativity is dogging your mind so bad that you even doubt when the answer is given to you and is in your face. They saw the land prosperous, but they still doubt it, which means it ain't what they saw, it's how they perceived what they saw. It wasn't what they were looking at. Let me put it to you like that. But it's how they saw what they were looking at. How do you see what you're looking at? Did you not know that you can be looking at something that's great, but see it as nothing? Likewise, you can look at something that's not great, but see it as the greatest of all. Why? Because of the attitude, perspective. You know why we see things outside of us incorrectly because we see things inside of us incorrectly. When I see myself from the inside incorrectly, then I see everything outside of me incorrectly as well. That's what was going on right here. See, your negative attitude does not start when you see things and say things about what you see. Your negative attitude begins before you ever open your mouth or open your eyes or see anything. It's just that what you see and what you hear just triggers the negativity we already have. Negativity is an insect that's eating away at the root of your fruits, your fruit tree called your life and making sure it never produce its fruit at all, or at least not maximum. Listen, you may have a negative attitude and you still accomplish some things, but let me tell you something. What you don't realize is there's a lot more that you could accomplish if you were negative. Now let's just see what you accomplished by being negative which tells you the power of the grace of God upon your life. 
that even in your negative attitude, you've been able to find some positive thing. You've been able to do some positive thing, but you still hold yourself back. So it doesn't mean if you got a negative attitude, you ain't going to ever have no money. You ain't going to ever do anything right. That don't mean that. It means you're going to stifle your growth. You're going to hinder your development, which means you will not achieve what you can. You will not maximize. You will always be dealing with minimum. This is why a lot of people cannot get above minimum wages because your attitude, not your education, your attitude. Not your, listen, not your uh, 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 aptitude. Aptitude is your education. You can have a high aptitude, a high level of education, but have a low attitude. And it's your attitude that's going to win over your aptitude. Because it's attitude that determines altitude, not aptitude. That's three different words. So we got attitude, which is your emotions, aptitude, which is your intelligence, and altitude, which is your level of living. See? So you got to understand that. You can be the smartest in the room and be the least successful. Why? Wrong attitude, bad attitude. So it says, after they saw all of that, we all watch this. They said uh, the, the cluster of grapes was big. The pomegranates and figs were big. And it says, after 40 days of scouting out the land, they returned with the report. And watch this. And they said, all these people are too big, too great. They started complaining. Even after seeing the prosperity, they started complaining. And then Caleb, in verse number uh, 30, says, he interrupted, Caleb interrupted, called for silence before Moses and said, let us go up and take the land now. We can do it. Why is it that there was 12 spies that went and saw the land? 12 men, grown men, saw the land. But 10 of them came back with a negative report and two came back with a faith report. Why is that? When they saw the very same thing. Joshua and Caleb had a positive report where the other 10 spies had a negative report. Why is it? Because the first 10 leaders had the same attitude as the congregation. They were negative. They were negative, but they were in leadership, y'all. Wow. But two of the leaders were positive. Do you know what? Most people in leadership position got the wrong attitude. And that's why most people got a bad attitude. Leadership is very important. What is the attitude of your pastor, of your leader, in any area of your life, what is their attitude about? It's affecting you. If you are receiving, if you have opened yourself up to, see, that's the power of leadership. But watch this. Caleb said, we can do it. Let's go do it now. But verse 31, but the other said, we can't attack those people. They, they're way stronger than we are. They spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scouted out the land from one end to the other. It's a land that's swallowing people whole. Negative people always believe the evil report, the report of gloom and doom. They call that keeping it real, being realistic. No, that's real real doubt and real fear. That's what's real. That's the keeping it real that you're doing. That ain't real faith. See, that's the wrong kind of real. <laughs> See, and skip on down to verse, verse number one of chapter 14. It says the whole community, I'm reading in the Message Bible. 
the whole community was in an uproar. Well, and all night, all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, their leaders. The entire community was in a was in on it. Why didn't we just die in Egypt or in this wilderness? Why has God brought us to this country to kill us? Our wives and our children are about to become plunder. Why don't we just head back to Egypt and do it right now? Soon they were all saying it to one another. Let us pick a new leader. Let's head back to Egypt. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces in front of the entire community, gathered in emergency session. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, members of the scouting party, ripped their clothes and addressed the people. Watch this. They are some of the people of Israel. The land we walked through and scouted out is a very good land. This is Joshua and Caleb talking now. And very good indeed. If God is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land that flows, as they say, with milk and honey. And he'll give it to us. Just don't rebel against God. And don't be afraid of those people. Why? We'll have them for lunch. They have no protection and God is on our side. Don't be afraid of them. But verse number, uh, uh, what is this? Mm. The next verse says, but in, but in arms, but up in arms, now the whole congregation was talking about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Moses and Aaron. Why? Negative minded people cannot handle positive, strong faith leadership. Wow. Let me say it again. Negative minded people cannot handle strong minded, faith filled leadership, positive minded leadership. They'll always look for leaders to suit their negative, to fit their negative mentality. Because they really want to stay there. They don't like being negative, but they're too afraid to leave their negative mentality. So what they do, before they become positive, before they change their attitude, they are, are willing to go back where they came from, where they don't want to be, where they don't like, but that's how much they fear faith. That's how much they fear changing for the better. That they're willing to not only stay negative, they're willing to live in a negative life, which means below zero. They rather take their lives in the negative. That means below zero. Wow. That's what it said. It said, listen, yes, the land is prosperous. Yes, the land is great. But we saw the enemy. We saw opposition. And we were as grasshoppers in their eyes. How did they know that? The people never said that. Oh, I know. See, that's the thing with negative-minded people. Negative-minded people, they speak and think for other people, but incorrectly. They always assume the negative about other people. Negative-minded people always assume the other people are being negative about them. When the negativity comes from them, not the other people. Let me put it to you like this. Whenever you have a person accusing another person of cheating and they've given them no evidence of cheating, that means the person that's accusing the other person of cheating is struggling with cheating themselves. So they see the other person through the eyes of their cheating or their 
temptation to cheating. And so they think since they're being tempted, you being tempted. So when they see something that don't look right, they think you will do what they would do, which means this, insecure people always accuse others of what's true of them. When you negative, you insecure. And that negativity and insecurity causes you to accuse and to see others really the way you see yourself. You're insecure towards them because you're insecure about you. But when you are secure in you, you give other people that same thing. You see how this work? That's why you got to get rid of the negative attitude because it eats away at your life and your relationships and your connections in life. And it keeps your relationships and keep your every area of your life from progressing because you cast off negative stuff and, and which is death and you kill your own life. You kill your own relationship because your negativity that's in your mind is spilling over into everything that's connected to you and you're killing it. And so watch this. They said, let us get a leader, find out some new leaders who will take us back. Wow. Now they wanted to go forward, but they weren't willing to give up their current attitude. You got to understand some about this, neg this negativity thing. They say, listen, see, they forgot, and this is what negative-minded people do. They forgot they spent 400 years in bondage and complaining about it every day. But watch this. When God brought them out of bondage, they brought their negative attitude with them. That's why I said to you before, You've got to process your emotions that are created from negative experiences in the past. They had a past, this generation had a past of 400 years. This generation and people before them. So, so they saw for 400 years, they saw their people in bondage and in slavery and, 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 Every generation passed on to the next generation a negative attitude. So their attitude, their negative attitude was generational. What did your family pass on to you? See, all of us got some negative stuff from our family. But you cannot use it as an excuse to continue. You got to take responsibility for it and say, you know what, I got to break this generational negativity that's in my life because it affected your mama, your grandmama, your great-grandmama, and, and so on and so on and so on and so on. See, I decided to break some things in my family's line, in my life. And that's what Jesus died and gave us the power to do, to be able to break those family curses. Jesus broke the number one curse of sin, but then the power of the Holy Spirit that broke the curse of sin, now we must apply it to our personal individual lives and break the smaller curses of our family that plague our lives mentally, physically, and spiritually. It's not enough just to be saved. Now you got to take that salvation and now free other areas of your life. The Bible says you got to work out your soul salvation. Some of y'all just think it's, it's enough to just to be saved. And that's why your attitude ain't changing because you're just trying to hold on till Jesus come. You ain't really trying to get better. You saved, but people starting to doubt your salvation. You know why? Because your mentality hadn't really got better since you got saved. Your life probably hadn't gotten better since you got saved. Your marriage probably haven't gotten better since you got saved. It ain't because you're not saved. It's because you haven't learned how to apply 
the power that saved you to your everyday life. And tonight we're talking about mentality. See, Jesus did not die for you to be negative. Because negativity is killing your life. So watch this, y'all. Verse number, look at verse number uh in chapter 14, verse number 24. Uh yeah, it says, but but my servant, now, now, in other words, God done got mad at him now. And God telling them, listen, you're not going in. Because of your attitude, he told this generation, you're not going in. He told that congregation and those 10 leaders that you're not going in to the land of promise because of your murmuring, complaining, and rebelling. See, that negative attitude calls you to rebel because it calls you to complain and murmur. You got something negative to say about everything. You see something positive, you find the negative in it. Somebody show you something they do, they say, yeah, but it could have been better. Really? Wow. Because that negative attitude makes you insecure, makes you unappreciative. It makes you a hater, y'all. Yes. You find yourself hating on other folks. And that's what leads us into the next thing when we get into that. See? Because when you're negative like that, you find reasons not to celebrate people. But watch this. God says, because of your attitude, you're not going in. But then watch this. One verse said, they say, okay, okay, okay. Uh uh, we, 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 you, you right, you right, we we wrong. We got the wrong, we got the wrong attitude. We're gonna change. Go do it. God said, No, 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 don't go now, because I'm not with you. He said, because of your attitude, I'm no longer with you. Oh, wow. I don't know about you, but I can't afford for God not to be with me. But because of that attitude, God says, if you go do that, which is the right thing to do, I won't be with you. Wow. Now, was it God's will for them to go to the land and fight? Yes. But because of their first response was, we ain't going, we can't do it, they too big, we too small, is this, is that, whatever. They found every negative reason not to go. But once they found out that God was upset with them for all the things they said and thought, they said, okay, okay, we sorry, we'll go, come on, let's go. God said, nope, too late. Why? Because I see your true attitude. You know, I'm the same way. If I ask somebody to do something and their first response is negative, I leave it right there. I say, okay, no problem. I'm sorry to bother you, you know, whatever. I'm going to go, no, no, you know, okay, okay, no, no, no. No, I don't want you to now. Why? Because it's, it's not a free will. See, because you're only doing it because you think I got upset? See, because you gave me your first and true attitude when you said no. You know, I used to tease my wife all the time, and, I, and, it, and it's true. If I ask my wife to make me a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and her, and her first response is, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't beg, or I don't ask no more. But then she come around later and say, okay, I want to make this sandwich. I don't, I don't want the sandwich now. I still want a sandwich, but I don't want you to make my sandwich. You know why I tell them? Why well, I don't want them to make my sandwich? Because now you're going to put your negative attitude in my peanut butter and my jelly, and grape jelly ain't going to taste like grape jelly with your negative attitude in it. My Peter Pan peanut butter, creamy version, would not be creamy and taste right with your negative attitude in it. See, I don't want people doing stuff for me and with me who got a negative attitude. I do it by myself. I'd rather do it by myself. Well, let me tell you something. 
Father God is the same way. God said, listen, I don't work with people with a negative attitude. Yeah, you, you, you better hear me. I'm trying to tell you. Some of y'all think it doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. God said, the reason I'm no longer helping you, the reason I'm no longer working, because your attitude. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody out there tonight because I'm talking to myself. And whenever you hear this, listen to me very careful. God has sent me to tell you, it's your attitude that's going to cause him to stop working in your life. And see, here's, here's why some of y'all don't believe that. Because you're still alive. You still got your car. You still got your health. You still got your house. You still got your monies or whatever. See, what you understand is this. God told this generation of people, he said, you know what? I'm done with y'all this day. Watch this, y'all. He said, you will not go into the land. Y'all got to read it. I don't have time to read all the scriptures. You got to go read the story. He said, you will not go into the land. I promise you now, I will not allow you to go into the land. I'm going to keep my promise, and I'm going to fulfill my promise. He said, but it won't be in your life. I'm going to wait for your children. Wow. Is it possible that because of your negative attitude that you had for so long, and you thought because God didn't kill you, you thought because you ain't dead, you were okay. Now, is it possible that because of your negative attitude, God has decided to skip over you? He let you stay alive so there don't be a void in your family. But he's not keeping you alive for you. He's keeping you alive for somebody else. Wow. That means when you have the wrong attitude, it'll put your life in a holding pattern. Some of you that I'm speaking to tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He just corrected me. Holy Spirit just corrected me. Holy Spirit says, everybody I'm talking to tonight, somewhere in some area of your life, you're in a holding pattern. Not in everything, but in some key areas of your life, your attitude has put you in a holding pattern to where you're going around in circles and you're not making progress. You're moving, but you're not moving forward. He said, you stop cycling forward and you start circling around. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, look, look at, look at um, uh, verse number, uh, chapter 14, verse number 30. Let's read it again. We're going to read down to verse number 34. It says, doubtless, you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell in therein. See, God said to them now, okay, you don't change your mind. Now you don't, you, you, you don't saw I got upset. You don't saw I'm not pleased with you. And now you want to go? God said, no. You showed me your real attitude the first time. And now you stuck. And I'm going to stick with that. Watch it because let me tell you something. Change is not change when you say yes. Because now you see you're going to miss out on something. You ever had somebody do that? They said no. But once they saw what they're gonna miss out on, they, they said, "Okay, you know what? I, I, okay, I go no, no, I'm good, I'm good. Stay with your no." See, that means they don't really have a willingness to say yes, but they're only saying yes because they see they're gonna miss out on something. You see, mm, but that's, that's, that's I want you to think about that. That's powerful. But let's finish reading this. Watch this. Watch this. He says to the children of Israel, don't go up now. Nope, ain't happening. 
But look what he says. He said, doubtless you shall not come into, he said, without a doubt, surely you will not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. God said, listen, I'm done with you. I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to let you circle until you die. I'm going to let you wonder until you die and just waste away. And while you're doing that, I'm going to wait on your children to raise up, your children to grow up. I'm going to wait on the generation after you who ain't got no sense right now, who don't know no better right now. I'm going to wait for them. I'm going to wait for the non-church because the church folk, the religious folk, y'all don't got too into your ways, into your tradition. God say, I'm done with you. Your attitude stinks. But I'm going to wait for a generation who will say yes to me the first time. Listen to me very careful. When you say yes to God, it better be the first time. Don't let your yes be a second yes, which means don't say no first and then say yes later. God's going to hold you to the first no. Yes. You heard me. He said, watch this. In verse number 32, he said, but as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and your children shall wander in the wilderness for 40 years and your whoredom until your carcasses be waxed, wasted in the wilderness. After the number of days in which you search the land, even to even 40 days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. God says, I will not fulfill this promise because your attitude was such and you so locked in your attitude that you want to stone my leaders, you want to find your other leaders, you want to do your own thing, you don't want to fulfill my will because you're too negative, you're too afraid, you're too full of doubt. He says, stay where you are. Have you, have you done that to yourself? that you so locked into your negative attitude that you don't cut yourself off? Oh, you say you're going to heaven, but you don't go in a handbasket. <laughs> you're going to go being drugged. Why? Because you don't say no to God in fulfilling his plan for your life. Because you're afraid. Because you're negative. And God said, watch this, y'all. He said, for every day, of such in that land, you shall wonder a year. So that means this, y'all. Their negative attitude turned days into years. And God said, one day is going to turn into a year. You search for 40 days, now you shall wonder for 40 years. Wow. See, that's what a negative attitude does, y'all. A negative attitude causes us to get stuck one day for 40 years. That's why I tell you, you cannot waste your time. Every day is important. One day has the power of one year. So every time, every day I say yes to God's will, I'm affecting the years of my life. Let me say it again. Every day that I say yes to God's will, every day that I'm in faith, every day that I'm positive, I'm affecting the years of my life by what I do every day. So don't tell me a day doesn't matter. Don't tell me you can afford one day of negativity. Can you afford, let me ask y'all a question. 
Can you afford to lose a whole year worth of pay? No, you can't. Then that means you can afford to have a negative attitude all day long. You can't afford to waste one day because one day can cost you years. Let me ask y'all a question. When a criminal go out and commit a crime and he gets caught, he get caught one day. They didn't catch him all the other day, but they caught him on one day. When they convict him and sentence him, how long do they convict him for? How long do they sentence him for? Do they sentence them for one day? No, no, they sentenced them for years. See, life don't give you back one day when you sow one day. Life give you back years when you sow one day. You got to get that. And because of the understanding, that's why every day I want to be productive. You know why? Because I want years of productivity to manifest in my life. And the way you get years of productivity to manifest in your life, you've got to be productive every day. And every day that you don't, you just affected a year. I'm just, I'm being honest with you. You can believe it or not believe it. I believe it and I operate that way and I'm saying it why. Because how do you think God said to the children of Israel in Joel chapter two, he said, I'm going to restore back to you the years that the locusts and the canker worms stole from you. See, you can get years back if you make a decision today and start walking in a certain attitude that's based upon truth, faith, and positivity. You will recover and restore years of your life. Just like your negative attitude has cost you years. Your change of attitude to a positive attitude will restore years that you've lost and then set you up for great years to come. So I just showed you how to recover the lost years of your past and how to bless the years of your coming future by what you do today, by the attitude you take today. If you make up your mind today, I'm gonna change my attitude all the years you lost in your marriage can be restored. I don't care what it, ha what it is, what happened. Why? That's the power of your attitude. And when your attitude aligns up with the truth, it ain't just your attitude, but your attitude got to be lined up with the truth and got to flow and agree with the truth and the positive energy and life begin to flow in your life and faith begin to flow. Then the spirit of God begin to move in a powerful way, restoring supernaturally the years of your life. This generation lost future years because of what they did in past days. Let me say it again. This generation we just read about in Numbers chapter 13, 14, 15, or 14. They lost years of their future life because of their attitude in the past days. Wow. That principle is still true, y'all. Please hear me on that. But it said because Joshua and Caleb was of a different spirit, a different attitude, I'm going to bring them in. And because your children, he says, don't have a negative attitude, I'm going to bring them in. See, I don't want God to put me on hold because my attitude ain't right. Is it possible that your life has been put on hold because you have a negative attitude? Yeah. See, always search yourself. And when you do that, and if you find that it's not the case, then you'll find out what it is. But make sure it's not your attitude. So today and this week going forward, Let's focus on evaluating our attitude, changing our attitude, making the necessary adjustment, but you gotta accept the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts, but that's okay. It's gonna help you and you'll feel better about it later. See?
your attitude. Watch this. Mm, mm, mm. Let me ask you a question as I prepare to close tonight. Got a couple of questions to ask you. What do your mind think when you see challenges? See, we saw the people of God when they saw the challenge. Because let me tell you something. Prosperity can be a challenge. When you see challenge, what comes to your mind first? When you see a, a challenging financial situation, when you see a challenging uh, job, you see a challenging uh, opportunity, whatever you see that's challenging you, do your mind think quit first or create first? What comes to your mind? How to get out of it or how to go through it? Do your mind think about quitting first when a challenge arises in your marriage, in your body, your health, your finances, your job, your ministry, your church, your community, whatever? Do you think quit first? If quitting come to your mind first, when a challenge arises, you have a negative attitude. Now, notice what I said. I didn't say if you ever thought about quitting, you have a negative attitude. I said, if quitting comes to your mind first, you have a negative attitude. Because, listen, we all entertain quitting at some point, but not first. See? Positive people get discouraged sometimes. But when that's what comes to your mind first, that means you got a negative disposition. Watch this. When you see challenge, if your mind start creating ways to get through it, then you have a positive attitude. You got the right attitude. Because the Bible says in Genesis 1, when God saw the earth and its chaos, he thought of creation. He didn't say, what am I going to do about this? When stuff happened in your life, do you throw your hands up first of quitting and give up? Or do you lift your hands up in praise and start praising God and say, I don't know what I'm going to do, but one thing I am, I'm going to praise God in this. Is that what you do first? Do you throw up your hands in praise or do you throw up your hands in quitting? I give up. If you think about quitting first, you have a negative attitude. When you see challenges, do you think about opposition or opportunity? How do you see challenges? See, do you see challenges first as opposition and secondly as opportunity? Or do you see challenges first as opportunity and then secondly opposition? Because opposition is real. But when I'm faced with challenge, I see opportunity first. Then I see the opposition. I must deal with it. So a positive attitude doesn't ignore opposition. It just see opportunity first. But if you see opposition first when a challenge arises, which means you go through a period of depression right off the bat, it's because you got a negative attitude. And that means you're immature. Because maturity is your attitude to where it does the opposite. That's how you can tell if you're spiritually mature. See? Here's how you can tell when you're spiritually mature. When your mind think opportunity first when you see challenges and not opposition. Here's how you see your spiritual maturity. When your mind think about creating first and not quitting you're spiritually mature that's how you can tell so when life happens in front of you what's your first conscious thought what's your first initial response that's who you are simple as that that's what the word said in in, in proverbs 23 as a man thinketh in his heart 
so is he. Whatever comes to your mind first, that's who you are. If faith comes to your mind first, that's who you are. If fear comes to your mind first, that's who you are. Wow. Listen, I'm out of word, out of time, but not out of word. But that's our lesson for the night. And I want you to sleep on it. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Starting right now. To spiritually mature. To change your mentality. Because your mentality reveals your true level of spirituality. Let me say it again. Your mentality reveals your true level of spirituality. How you mentally respond to everyday life is the manifestation of your level of spiritual maturity or the lack of. God bless you. I appreciate you tonight. I pray that the word's been a blessing to you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. We'll be right here again, continuing on this teaching, the insects of life, the seven key emotions called insects that you got to get them under control in your life so you can move your life forward. It's time to get out of the holding pattern and get things moving in your life. But it all begins with your attitude. Until then, let's live as you was created, not as you born. God bless you. Appreciate you. Love you. Y'all have a great night. See you. On Take care, Facebook family.